first down, they hand off to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50-yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y. And again, it's picked off. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. Hey, what's going on, Colts fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your host, Cody Felger, and you just got me today. But that's okay. Today I wanted to bring you another episode, and I wanted to bring you another list. Uh, my list, it's a shorter one today, uh, but it's three Colts who could be on the roster bubble in 2020. And before I do that, I just want to shout out some of our sponsors. First off, Roster Guy. Uh, fantastic. Check them out on rosterguy.com. Um, all the NFL news that you'll ever need. Uh, ch- check out Roster Guy and then also the Fan to Fan Network. Be sure to check them out as well. We are a part of the Fan to Fan Network and so uh, covering coverage of all 32 NFL teams. Um, so even if you are not a Colts fan and you're listening to this episode, uh, be sure to check them out. Who, if you support the Colts, if you don't, they have your favorite team there. So be sure to check out Fan to Fan Network there. But and uh, yeah, so I have three guys here on my list who I think I will put on this list. But I have a couple honorable mentions. Um, first off, I'm just going to throw the entire receiving core outside of the top four. We know we're going to make the final 53-man roster. So that would be Reese Fountain. That would be Marcus Johnson. That would be Ashton Doolin. And I was tempted to throw a guy like Desmond Patman on this list. But I think it's different for Desmond Patman because he was not – you know, he, he was drafted late this year, so he hasn't seen any game reps. I wanted to kind of strictly make this list for guys who have been on the active roster and are not rookies this year. So, uh, yeah, let's get, a, get to the first guy on our list. Number three for me is T.J. Carey. And now T.J. Carey, he's, he's, he's an experienced cornerback, right? He's played some nickel. He's played some dime in his time in the league. He's played with the Raiders. He's played most recently with the Browns. Um, and Carey's a decent cornerback. I mean, I, I feel like the Colts signed him, especially because – Last year when Kenny Moore went down, they didn't have anybody to cover the slot. I mean, there was a significant drop-off from, you know, Kenny Moore to Shaq Taylor or whoever they put out there. So the Colts knew they needed to upgrade there, get some insurance in case Kenny Moore was to miss a game or two. So I think that was part of the reason why they signed TJ Carey. I mean, they already signed Xavier Rhodes in the offseason as well. But I think Carey's just more insurance, especially at that corner position. Uh, it's a position that we know, uh, especially as Colts fans with dealing with different injuries, it's a position that there's always seems to be injuries at. It's kind of similar to running back. I would say those two positions mirror each other very well in terms of uh, it's just a lot of wear and tear on the body. And especially when you get up there in age, um, it's a bigger factor. And so uh, the Colts signed Kerry last, you know, last year he only started in six games, but he he's played 16 games pretty much his entire career. He's only missed – uh, three games his entire career in the NFL. He's been playing since 2014. But the reason I put Kerry on this list, and it might surprise some people, I'm very high on Isaiah Rogers, the Colts' sixth-round selection this year out of UMass. Uh, he's not as big um, as TJ Carey, but he's a feisty guy, right? He's a scrapper. He's kind of got – gives me those Kenny Moore vibes, honestly. I mean, he's undersized. He's a really good tackler. He's feisty. He's a ball hawk. And he can also help in the return game. And so – um, I don't really th- know how much Kerry probably, you know, can contribute a little bit to special teams. But, you know, if, if Isaiah Rogers is out there returning punts, returning kicks, and whatever he's doing, I think I, but that could potentially push Kerry off this roster. I mean, it's not like the Colts are committed to him long term, which I think is important, right? He's only signed to a one year deal. So if the Colts were to cut ties with him at the end of the preseason, I don't think it would be that big of a loss, honestly. I think he's just more of insurance especially if Isaiah Rogers lights it up in the preseason, you know, whether that be on just special teams or whether that be even on the field. Um, I think that that could be a real possibility, but you no know, TJ Carey's not a huge loss. Like I said, so that's why I'm going to put him at number three. He's not as notable as some of these other guys on the list that I'm going to look at. So TJ Carey makes my list at number three. And, and now for number two, I'm going to go with a guy that I personally love. I've loved this. I've loved this guy ever since the Colts selected him in 2018, the historic draft class. He's one of the more underrated guys the Colts drafted. He, they drafted him later in that draft in the fifth round. Uh, running back Jordan Wilkins, 
he's been very effective actually when he's gotten the football. But that's just been the trouble. He's been sitting behind Marlon Mack. Uh, and he just has not seen a ton of touches. I mean, in total, he's had 111 rushes and he's two set two years he's played in the league. Um, he's played in 30 games total. He's missed two games. Last year, he missed two games. Uh, but he, the thing that sticks out to me about a guy like Jordan Wilkins, his average whenever he gets the, hand, gets the ball is phenomenal. I mean, last year, six yards per carry. The year before, 5.6 yards per carry. So he's got almost a six-yard average in his career when he's running the football. The problem is he just has not got a lot of touches with Marlon Mack really still in a lot of those touches. Naheem Hines also um, not so much, you know, in the running game, but Naheem Hines, you know, also is receiver out of the backfield. And so that takes away some snaps for Jordan Wilkins. And also, you know, Jonathan Williams last year got a decent snap, decent amount of snaps when Marlon Mack even did go down. Uh, but Jordan Wilkins, very effective back when he's given the ball. The problem is he's just sitting behind a Marlon Mack, who's a pretty darn good running back. And so I think there's all, honestly a possibility the Colts carry four running backs. Uh, I just don't know what that'll look like for Jordan Wilkins because you think about it, whenever the Colts carried four running backs, even last year before Marlon Mack went down, I mean, even in 2018 with Jonathan Williams, he really didn't dress. He didn't really do a whole lot. So maybe Jordan Wilkins can contribute more on special teams and maybe that he can just find his way, you know, onto this 53 man roster uh, when cutdowns happen and just be more of a special teams reserve type guy. But I think it could be important to keep a guy like Jordan Wilkins, honestly. Uh, that's why he's kind of in the middle here. Because I feel like the Colts could cut him or the Colts could keep him. Because we saw even last year, uh, when Marlon Mack went down, the Colts needed that fourth running back really, really badly. And, and you know, Jonathan Williams, credit him, he came up and he performed very well. Jordan Wilkins performed pretty well when given the chance. Uh, but then you also draft Jonathan Taylor. I think that's the big reason why Jordan Wilkins could potentially be out this year. Uh, but the good thing is Jordan Wilkins is not going to command a lot of money. I mean, he's only on his third year of his deal. So Jordan Wilkins is going to have another year after this on his rookie deal. And the question is going to be for Marlon Mack, right? What's going to happen after Marlon Mack's contract is up this year, right? Could Marlon Mack potentially come back to Indianapolis, which I think right now is looking unlikely, or does Marlon Mack uh, decide to go other, other places, right? A place where he maybe gets a little bit more money, and also, you know, a full-time gig. And I know the Colts really like that running back by committee. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Marlon Mack. Honestly, if I was choosing, if Marlon Mack decides he wants to go somewhere else, which he may decide, I don't see the problem with, you know, keeping Jordan Wilkins on your active roster and having him be really that third running back, second, you know, behind Jonathan Taylor in terms of just running the football. I wouldn't have a problem with Jordan Wilkins staying and then maybe even – if he's decent in that backup role to Jonathan Taylor next year, even sign him to a small extension. I really would not have a problem with that. He's still fairly young. Um, he's in his mid twenties. So he, he's still got some things that he can learn. He's still growing, uh, but I like Jordan Wilkins a lot. I think he's a solid back. I think that he's a guy that just hasn't been given a ton of chances. And, you know, if Marlon Mack decides he's not going to come back next year, this could be Jordan Wilkins chance to get more touches. So Jordan Wilkins on my list, cause he can be a little bit significant as opposed to if the Colts cut TJ Carey, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I get that. But if they cut Jordan Wilkins, I would understand, but I would be a little bit more surprised than TJ Carey. I think it would impact me a little bit more than TJ Carey, honestly. Um, you know, because he was a draft pick. TJ Carey is just a free agent, one-year deal signing. So that's just why I have him on there. And I, I'm guessing you guys can kind of decide and kind of figure out who I'm going to have here at number one. I think it's fairly obvious, honestly. Uh, Tyquan Lewis, one of Derek's Ohio State guys. Uh, honestly, the only guy that I've really heard Derek say is a disappointment. And I think that's significant because when Derek says it, <laughs> I mean, he knows these guys ins and outs, right? So for Tyquan Lewis, it's a bummer. Just the lack of production that Lewis has had really in his time with the Colts. I mean, he was drafted in the second round, 64th overall, so a fairly high pick in that 2018 draft, right? We praise Chris Ballard so much for that draft, historic draft in terms of getting two all pros back to back picks. But some of those second round picks are, you know, Braden Smith turned out to be a pretty decent player. We think Kamoko Torre is trending up this year. Taekwon Lewis is kind of the black sheep of this draft right now. I mean, he hasn't done a ton. Um, he's missed some time. He's been the healthy scratch at times. And he just honestly has not been very productive when on the field. And so uh, I think it's significant, especially because last year we know how bad that three technique position was for the Colts and Tycon Lewis still was not getting reps over the Nico Watry. And I think that's important. And even when he was on the field, he just was not very productive. 
So I think Tyquan Lewis undoubtedly makes my one. He's a high investment pick that has not returned well for the Colts so far. Um, this is going to be a, a tough year for him. But honestly, I would not be shocked if we see at the end of the preseason, you know, the Colts like some of these guys. It's just kind of, kind of a log jam, honestly, at the defensive line position. I honestly would not be shocked if the Colts decide to go like for a guy like al Muhammad over Tyquan Lewis, right, if it comes down to those two. Because al Muhammad's Muhammad's a solid player. Um, he's not – terrific I mean I think he's just a solid rotational piece but he's done more on the field than Tyquan Lewis has at this point so I think for me I would not be shocked if that did happen but I have him at number one because of the high investment that you placed in him and, and honestly up to this point he has not even come close to sniffing that 64th overall selection so that's my list for the top three Colts I think will be on the roster bubble this year let me know in the comments some of your guys. Are there any other guys that you think potentially could be on the roster bubble? Um, maybe there's a guy that I missed. I think that's about everybody on the roster. Honestly, this was a hard list. Originally, it was a top five list. I kind of thought about it, and I was like, there's really not a ton of guys that I would say are really on the roster bubble, right? If Quincy Wilson was on it, I mean, last year I'd probably put him on this list, but Quincy Wilson's gone, um, and I don't think there's a ton of guys that, that honestly are going to be on the roster bubble that are going to be – Super, super big surprises, unless, of course, you know, COVID impacts, uh, you know, kind of vet cuts and stuff like that. Maybe that could be a reason. But strictly based off of performance and based off of the different players on the team right now, I think these three guys, I'm the most confident that could potentially be on the roster bubble. So let me know in the comments if there's a guy that I missed. Thank you so much for your support of this video. Uh, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Um, we'd love for you to subscribe and, and get our videos frequently. Um, and, and just get involved in the Brain the Juice community. I mean, we love it. We love the interaction. We love your guys' you know, just comments and kind words. They're so great. Uh, be sure to also find us on social media. You can find me at CPFelger55, and you can find Brain the Juice podcast on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, all those things. Just type in Brain the Juice podcast, and you'll find us there. Thank you guys so much, and as always, go Colts.